In programming, you can assign values to variables, and in some languages, you can also assign values to constants. What's the difference? Well, the values of variables can vary, which is why they're called variables, but the values of constants can't. In other words, you can change the value of a variable all you want, but once you've assigned an initial value to a constant, you can't change it again. Its value stays constant. JavaScript just recently got constants in ECMAScript version 6. And that version of ECMAScript has now been implemented in all of the major browsers. So you can start using constants in your code. And the way you do that in JavaScript is with the const keyword. So let's give that a try in the Chrome browser. So I'm going to define a constant x and assign it the value 3. So it gets that value, and if I try to change that value, I get an error. If I try to redeclare it as a constant, I also get an error. So using the const keyword, make sure that you cannot change the value of a constant, and it also prevents you from redeclaring it. Now, if we try to redeclare it as a variable, we're also going to get an error because x is already defined as a constant. Next, let's take a look at what happens if we declare an object as a constant. I'm gonna, so I'm going to declare a constant object, O, and give it two properties, x3 and y4. So when I look at O, I see those two properties in x. Now, if I try to change the value of O so that it's now an object with one property z, I'm going to get an error. So far, so good. We've defined an object. We're not allowed to change O's value. But what happens if I try to change the properties of O? Can I change those? Well, let's try that. So if I try to, if I add a new property to O, like O.Z, and assign that a value, I can do that. So I can add a property to object, and I can then modify it or delete that property or another property, and that's fine too. So I can delete the x property from, uh, from O, and that it doesn't complain about that. So you can see that while we can't give O a new value directly, in other words, we can't create a whole new object and assign it to O, we can completely change the object O by modifying its properties and adding or deleting properties. So what's being protected by O being a constant is the object reference, not the properties of the object. And if you need a refresher on object references, check out Chapter 5 in Head First JavaScript Programming. Is there a way to protect not just the object reference, but the property values as well? There is, actually, with property descriptors, and that's worthy of its own separate video. But the upshot is that you can use property descriptors to set attributes on an object's properties that effectively prevent an object's individual properties from being changed or deleted. Now, at this point, you might be wondering, well, why would I need to use a constant if I have a value that doesn't change, say, the diameter of the moon? Can't I just assign that value to a variable and just make sure I never change it? One advantage of constants is that they help prevent you from changing the value of a variable by mistake. It's easy, especially in a big program with lots of code, to forget what you're using a variable for and then make that mistake by, of changing it when you didn't really want to. So by using a constant, you're saying to yourself, as well as anyone else who might be working on the code with you, this is a value that shouldn't change. And you can think of using a constant as a form of documentation, as well as a way to prevent mistakes. Another advantage of using constants is that when your program is compiled, it can be optimized so that the constants are replaced with values, making your code just a tiny bit more efficient. So here's an example. So I'm declaring a num1 const and a num2 const. And I'm also making a function area that takes a radius parameter um, and then uses um, that radius to, to compute the area of a circle. So now I can create another const circle area, call area on num1 and num2, and get back the area of the circle. So in this example, the compiler could go ahead and compute the sum of num1 and num2, which is 30, when the code is being optimized, making the code faster when it's actually run. And a really good compiler could even recognize that calling the function area on a constant value 
for radius will return the same value every time. And it could go ahead and assign the value that we get back for circle area to the circle area constant so that the function area is never even called at runtime. And the reason that the compiler can do this optimization is because num1 and num2 are constants. Those values will never change. So num1 pl num plus num2 will always be 30. And in the example, the value of circle area will always be equal to 2827.433 and so on. Anywhere the compiler sees an expression using num1 and num2, like num1 plus num2, it can replace that expression with 30, for instance, if it's the sum. Now you might think of JavaScript as a scripting language that's interpreted rather than compiled, meaning that the browser is executing the program as it reads the program when you load the page, rather than first processing the code and turning it into an optimized form of code, like other languages like Java and C Sharp and Objective-C and all that do. But these days, JavaScript programs are not just interpreted, they're first optimized by JavaScript engines that run in browsers. So instead of simply interpreting JavaScript code, browsers are first optimizing that code and then interpreting it, which makes your code run a lot faster. So now you have a couple of good reasons to use constants in the future. They're widely supported by browsers now, although you need to make sure that if you're creating a web page that uses constants, that everyone who's loading that web page in their browser are using a modern browser because, as I said, these are relatively recent additions to the language, but you can go ahead and program with them now. So have fun playing with constants. And if you like this video, be sure to give us some feedback and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check out our website, wickedlysmart.com.